ability to metabolize lactose sugar. Now that's a biochemical test because it requires the presence of an enzyme called lactase. lactase. And, uh, lactose is a, is a disaccharide <coughs> sugar. It needs to be split into its simple components. Um, if, if an organism has the enzyme to do that, it's able to ferment the lactose eventually. And then when it ferments it, it turns the lactose sugar into some, some acidic byproducts. It makes acid. Lactococcus lactis yes. does that, and we'll call it lac positive or lac negative. Where it's asking about the presence of the lactase enzyme. Lac positive is L lactis, S saprophyticus, lac negative. We'll determine that for ourselves later on. And I don't take this as absolute truth, I'm just making an example. But we have gone from general to more and more specific, even to the point of looking at its molecules as to what it has. All right, so if, I'm, if you have a test tube with an unknown organism in it, you do a gram stick. When would you throw a spore? Automatic. Mm -hmm. When would you throw a spore test in there? Like on you that could gram positive acid side? acid fast oh. for spores. So it would be on the gram positive side? Yeah. yeah, there would be no reason at all to do acid fast on anything that's gram negative. Because there are no known examples of gram-negative cells of any kind that, are, that make spores. The only two genera that make spores are Clostridium and Bacillus, and they're both gram-positive rods. So if you've got something that is appearing gram-negative, don't do an acid fast. You eliminate that possibility. You've saved yourself some trouble. If you've got something that's a gram-negative rod, you don't do an acid-fast stain, because the only ones that are acid-fast are gram-positive rods that are mycobacteria. You don't need to do every stain. If you've got gram-negative, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Lucky. See, that's the beauty of this thing, because, you know, when you're going from, from general to more and more specific, you, you, you cut your list down with every step of the way until eventually you're down to one thing, and that's got to be what you have. I'll take gram negative on now, please. <laughs> yeah, well, there's lots of them. Your guts oh. are full of them. Oh. There's lots of them. The gram negative rods are probably the most various kind of bacteria on the planet. And the ones that live in your gut, we call them collectively enterics. So there's yeah. hundreds of genres of gram negative bacteria. So. Watch what you ask for. When we're doing our unknowns and we have like if we have gram negative, the only the, thing we're the, go on is shape and capsule. The the first morphological unknown experiment that you will perform is going to be pre pretty straightforward. Right? It's going to be based on morphology only. That stuff that you can see under a microscope with prepared slides with stains that have done been done correctly. But now I'm going to give you a possible list of organisms, and out of that list you will have one. And you'll, by making a dichotomous key, you'll be able to determine which one you've got. It's going to satisfy the questions that you ask. Gram stain first. Gram reaction first. Shape next. Uh, and then, you know, depending on the answers to that, you get more and more specific. Capsule, yes or no? Does that make sense? All right. Um, so the morphology unknown experiment Where's my schedule? Where's my schedule here? We're going to be doing that pretty soon. I'm going to give you the unknown for that. September the 8th. That's two days from now. Woohoo! It's a pretty small list of possibilities. Your key is not going to be very big, but I'm going to ask you to make your own key. You know, I'll provide the list of possibilities, you know, your, your possible suspects, if you will. And, and out of that list of possible sub suspects, yours will be one of them. And before you do anything, you construct a key. And once the key's on paper, that's the steps that you do in order. And if you follow your own key in order, it will lead you to the correct answer. And it will lead it, you to the correct answer in the most efficient way with the fewest number of tests. That's the way this thing works. It's a beautiful thing, and when you learn how it works and you begin to appreciate it, you'll agree with me. It's a beautiful thing, because if you do it right, it will save you a lot of work. When we get
get to the biochemical testing later on, you're going to have a notebook full of tests. There's lots of them. Um, with the SIM test, right, there's two biochemical tests there. Does it reduce sulfur? Yes or no. Does it produce indole? Yes or no. We've got a whole slew of fermentation tests. Does it ferment lactose? Does it ferment sucrose? Does it ferment glucose? Does it ferment mannitol? We've got uh, other biochemical tests that are more precision, more precise, specific. Uh, does it have the enzyme urease? Does it have the enzyme, ni enzyme nitrate, uh, nitrate reductase? So there's a bunch of them, but each of them is just a question that has a yes or no answer. And with those lists of questions, you make your key. And whatever I throw at you, you'll be able to find out what you've got. Good stuff. So I hope that now that you have a notebook that is accumulating a bunch of tools, you're realizing that they're really just questions. They're questions that have two possible answers. You see that now? All right, so I'm going to keep teaching you about stains. I think we have a couple more to go. Um, but we're almost to the end of what I can show you about morphology. The morphological stuff is almost in the back. And once we get through morphology, uh, I'll start with the biochemistry. That comes a little bit later.